Hello everyone. Today we are talking about one of the most important aspects in the job of an information security consultant, setting up and developing a company's ISMS. ISMS is short for Information Security Management System and that already explains what it does. It's a set of policies and measures to systematically manage sensitive data within an organization. Remember that sensitive data is all data that can potentially be traced back to an individual, thus allowing for re-identification. The goal of an ISMS is to mitigate and minimize risk factors as well as the broader concept of business continuity. I've covered many ransomware attacks on this channel and business continuity is one of the keystones in tackling these attacks. If your whole data is encrypted by an adversary and your employees can't work having, for example, ample backups, means that you can restore your systems and attackers don't gain anything from the often costly attacks on your systems. Also, the data they have stolen, uh, if it was sufficiently encrypted, they cannot leak anything. This is just one example of an ideal scenario from a defender's perspective, and a well-implemented ISMS gets you closer to this target. The main address C of an ISMS is the employee and his behavior. Next in line are the actual data in the underlying technology. What kind of data you're dealing with depends obviously on the company you're working in, but for now we assume that for example you have customers and you have to protect their data, such as for example credit card information. Again, an ideal ISMS is integrated in a comprehensive way such that it becomes part of a company's culture. To achieve its goals, ISMS follows established standards such as the famous ISO 27001, the International Standard for Information Security. It is noteworthy that the standard does not mandate specific technologies and tools to use, but you will find suggestions for logging, auditing and improvements of your ISMS. Often, companies try to become 2701 certified in order to prove to their customers that they have an ISMS in place. During the certification process, the company has to show that their ISMS identifies all relevant risks, provides steps and measures to tackle these risks. Going back to our business continuity example from before, the ISMS has to provide a plan with concrete steps what happens if a security breach happens. Finally, and probably most importantly, identify concrete individuals who are responsible for each step in the process. It is very important that you don't nominate two or more people, there has to be one person responsible. Of course, you should have a substitute if they're sick or otherwise unavailable. But one person has to be responsible, otherwise responsibilities get pushed around and no one takes any action. I'll finish this video with a couple of best practices and recommendations for your ISMS. Before you set up your ISMS, you need to understand your company's business needs. You need a holistic view of the operations and tools to understand system requirements. It is important to understand that ISMS is not a silver bullet solution which you can just wrap around any company. Its goal is to achieve the best possible security while simultaneously providing everyone the opportunity to fulfill their actual business needs. Your company's main goal is to do business and to make money, it's not to protect its assets. It's important to remember that. Next, monitoring and logging are essential part of any ISMS. Why? You can look at any of my videos on cyber attacks and you will notice that if you monitor and log data access, you can quickly identify malicious actors if, for example, you notice data access from someone who should not have access. One point that is mentioned in the ISO standards are security awareness trainings. I am, however, very skeptical, but you have to do them in order to get certified. Research has shown that these trainings amount to almost no increase in your employees' compliance with security regulations. You can watch my video on social engineering to hear about a very famous research case in which many men were only too eager to help an attractive woman to get all kinds of access. Moreover, phishing awareness trainings also do not significantly reduce the amount of people who fall trapped to phishing campaigns. Your employees will always be your weakest link which is why you should always apply the principle of least privilege. You can watch my video on this principle to learn more and you will find the link in the description below. Two more obvious recommendations, uh, which I touched on earlier, are backups and encryption. If your data is encrypted on your side, at rest and in transit, attackers can really not do much with them if they are stolen. Moreover, making regular backups means that you can just set up everything anew after, for example, a ransomware attack and you lose maybe one week of business. This is still a lot of money probably, but it's still less than losing a month plus paying the ransom. This concludes this video on ISMS. If you think I missed some important points, please leave them down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video and learned something, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I will see you in the next video.